Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Colton, and in today's video, we're gonna be comparing the difference between a Kodak CCD sensor and a Sony CMOS sensor with how they handle colors. So this is kind of a unique video to put together because the two cameras that we're gonna be using are actually 14 years apart. So with that, I wanna start out by saying that we are not gonna be comparing image quality, sharpness, dynamic range, any of that type of stuff. We're just looking at how these two sensors handle color. So from what I've heard on YouTube and what I've said on YouTube, uh, CCD sensors tend to have colors that are more vibrant, that pop, and CMOS sensors, especially ones that are in Sony cameras, tend to be more um, clinical or muted in terms of how their colors are handled. And I wanna see side by side if this is true. So I'm putting this video out there in a way to provide you know, fact or fiction in terms of these sensors and what's being said about them. So what we'll do is we will shoot the Olympus E-Volt E500, almost said E300, but the E500, it has a Kodak 4 thirds CCD sensor, and then we'll shoot the Sony A7 Mark III with a full frame CMOS sensor. So again, we're not comparing the quality of these sensors, just how they handle colors. Now my prediction is that the Kodak sensor is going to produce colors that are significantly more vibrant, that are uh, much more uh, film-like or that pop, you know, that sort of thing. And that the Sony sensor is going to be a lot more muted and a lot more neutral. So that's my prediction. We'll see if I'm right or if I'm wrong. To do this correctly, we are gonna shoot in the studio. So that way we can have all of the lighting the same and we'll set the white balance all the same and we'll even shoot the same POV in terms of the lens and its full frame equivalent. So that way, literally the only difference is the sensors themselves. So once we shoot uh, these images, which we're gonna shoot a lot of really colorful pictures, then we'll go over into Lightroom and we'll compare the differences between these two and then talk about it and see if in fact what is said is true. So. With that being said, let's jump over to the studio. All right, guys, welcome to our little studio here. And we're gonna be shooting on the Sony camera and the Olympus camera of some different scenes I'm gonna set up here on our backdrop. So we'll use some different color paper, we'll use colorful candy, uh, film boxes, all kinds of things that we can find here. Uh, that will hopefully show us the difference in how these two sensors handle colors. Now, in order to achieve a consistent look between these cameras, we do wanna make sure that our environment is controlled. So we will be um, setting our white balance to be the exact same on both cameras. We have a bright constant light here, which will be set to that white balance as well as this flash. Um, so in, in terms of white balance, everything should be identical between these two cameras. For the Sony camera, we will be using a 70 millimeter lens. And for the Olympus camera, we're gonna use a 35 millimeter lens because that will be a 70 millimeter full frame equivalent. So our point of view should be the exact same between these two cameras as well. So with all of that set, and hopefully I'll line up the shots super close, uh, we should be able to really truly get everything identical so that the only difference, as best as we can, is that one has a Kodak CCD sensor and one has a Sony CMOS sensor. So, with that said, let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna shoot is some candy. I've got some colorful rainbow candy that we're gonna have on some colorful backdrop. And hopefully this will give us a good starting point. So we'll shoot with the Olympus camera and the Sony camera, and then we will change over to a different scene. <laughs> 
Something that I'm noticing as I'm going through these is it is kind of hard to set up these shots, but the one benefit as far as making them consistent is that both of these lens happen to focus very close to the subject, which is really helping me out. Uh, the Olympus lens is actually a macro lens, so that's super helpful. The Sony lens is actually not a macro lens, it just happens to have a very close focusing distance. So um, that is literally saving me right now. All right, pivoting now, we're gonna jump over to some gummy bears, which I have shot in a previous video, so I do know it looks pretty cool, at least in my opinion it does. So we're gonna set up some more gummy bear shots and shoot them with both cameras as well. All right, so our next one, I found this really crazy sequence piece of paper at the um, hobby supply store, and I thought this could be interesting. I legit don't know if this is gonna be a great thing with flash being fired, but we'll see. Uh, and I'm just gonna stick a little train whistle that's shaped like a train engine on top of it so that we have something to look at, and uh, we'll see how this one looks. It could be hit or miss, so we'll find out soon. All right, we have taken a lot of shots. It's time for us to take these images, put them on the computer, and take a look at the straight raw files, what the difference is between these two cameras, and to see if there actually is any difference in how the colors are handled between these two sensors. So let's jump over to the computer. All right, everyone, welcome. We are over at the computer now looking at these images side by side in Lightroom. The, these are the raw files and we are gonna have the um, Olympus camera with the Kodak CCD sensor on the left-hand side for all of these shots. And then the Sony camera with the Sony CMOS sensor on the right-hand side for all of these shots. Now this is the first one that we took and this does have a, a pretty significant difference between the two. The Kodak sensor definitely appears to be much more saturated and the um, Sony sensor appears to be much, much, much more muted. Um, one thing that I will say, I have the card in front of me that I laid these candies on and I gotta say that the Kodak sensor does look significantly closer to how this card actually looks to my human eyes. Uh, whereas the Sony um, is, is way off. Now maybe if we add some color and we put in a little bit of work on the Sony side, we can get it to look more correct, but it definitely looks wrong. It definitely looks like washed out. Um, that could be a, an advantage. Maybe if you're working with clients, you want to have a little bit more control over the color, but I think that also means a lot more work. And again, with the Kodak sensor, just like sort of nailing the uh, color of the card right out of the camera. Um, 
Now, again, we're not comparing resolution. We're not comparing dynamic range, image quality, nothing like that. We're just looking at the colors um, because it would uh, otherwise be fairly unfair comparison resolution wise. And also keep in mind too that the different sensors are different shapes. So that's why the images are not going to look exact in terms of the aspect ratio. All right, next shot here from top down. This one is much, much closer in terms of mimicking the same shot. We almost got it exact here. Um, and again, same thing. We're, we're shooting at all the same settings. We have the exact same lighting setup. So the exposure is the same. What's the difference here is that the Sony is significantly more washed out, more muted than the, um, the Kodak sensor is. And I think in part because the Kodak colors are so much brighter, it's making the image look brighter, but they are actually the same exposure between the two. So again, Kodak sensor is really nailing the color of this card. It is a little bit saturated. Um, so the, the true color of this card probably falls in between these two sensors, but definitely is much closer to the Kodak sensor here. And I have to say also, if I was just picking one of these images, I would definitely go with the uh, Kodak sensor because it looks better. It looks more like how I saw it with my human eye and is a little more interesting. And the Sony is going to take some work and looks very bland to start out with. But that is also personal preference here. This one is actually pretty shocking. The, the first two, I was not surprised at the difference. It's what I you know, basically expected. But here, I am very surprised. The Kodak sensor on the left-hand side is producing pretty much what I expect it to do. But the Sony sensor on the right-hand side is actually getting the color wrong. It's not only that it's more muted, but it's actually incorrect. This was a blue card that was probably about the color that the Kodak sensor is, is giving it, maybe a, a hair darker, but the Sony sensor straight up making it look purple. Um, so I'm actually kind of surprised because my thought was that the, the Sony sensor was going to be much more muted, but much more accurate. And I've heard of people online talking about like, oh, you know, the CMOS sensors need to, you know, they're better because they're more color accurate. But in this case, it actually got the color completely wrong. Um, I did want to see if I could post-process it to get it closer. So this is it with some, you know, white balance adjustments. And we are able to pull out a more accurate look. This is more so what that blue card looked like. But again, the Kodak side has had no real adjustments here. So if we were to adjust this Kodak side too, we could probably get the blue to be more accurate as well. But very surprising. I mean, we are able to save it. It might have been a white balance issue. I'm not sure how that would be the case. But yeah, the original shot was totally wrong on, uh, on the CMOS sensor side. All right, the next shot here is of a train and I put it on this interesting sequence background and I again tried to get the shots as accurate as possible between the two. I would say this one, I noticed the least amount of color differences. These are very, very close. They're almost the same. I will say they, they do look a bit different just because we have um, a full frame sensor on this side. So we're getting a significantly more uh, blurring effect to the background. And since the Kodak sensor is a four third sensor, you have less um, uh, depth of field there. So, um, but with that aside, if I really look at these two, I would have to say that the Kodak sensor is skewing it a little more green in the tent and the CMOS sensor is a bit more magenta. Not by much, but enough, enough to notice the difference. I'll also say in general, the CMOS sensor is much cooler. It, it might be a little bit more accurate 
whereas the um, Kodak sensor is probably a little bit more warm. And I, I'm noticing that most with the color of this wood. This Sony side looks a lot cooler and the Kodak side looks a bit more warm, but the differences are very minor in this particular shot. Um, and I, I can't necessarily say I like one better than the other. I think if it'd be interesting to see some very minor tweaks between the two, what they would look like. All right, and then our last shot here of some film uh, empty boxes. And again, pretty much the same thing we've been seeing this whole time, much more muted uh, colors on the Sony CMOS sensor side, much more you know saturated on the um, Kodak sensor, CCD sensor side. Um, I gotta say, I think, I gotta say that the Kodak does look more accurate. It looks more accurate color wise, um, but maybe a, a tinge oversaturated for what they actually looked like. But this green is much closer to the actual cards green than on the Sony side really regardless of whether you're looking at the brighter or the darker part of the frame, neither one of those on the Sony side look correct. So I definitely feel like I'm leaning again towards the Kodak sensor as far as how the colors are, are handled here. And every one of these shots, aside from the train, there's a pretty noticeable difference that favors the Kodak sensor in terms of in my opinion, color accuracy, but also the, the pop of the colors and, and how interesting they are. And I, I also want to mention too, with the Sony side, this is not how the image looked to my human eye. We would have to go in and add saturation or add color back into this shot. And on the Kodak side, maybe it's a little oversaturated. We could always reduce the saturation a little bit. You know, if we're going to add saturation to one side, we could always reduce it from the other. So um, realistically, I think the Kodak, in terms of how it's handling colors, is winning. And again, this is with, just to be clear, the exact same camera settings, the exact same camera white balance, and then the lighting that we're using is all set the exact same. The shots are taken seconds between each other. So the only thing that is changing is the sensor itself. Um, so there you go. All right, we're back from the computer and I feel like the evidence is pretty clear. The CCD sensor definitely was much more colorful and the CMOS sensor was much more muted and neutral. That's not necessarily good or bad one way or another, but it does show that when people talk about CCD sensors, there is evidence to back up the claim that CCD sensors do make more vibrant, more colorful images. It's also worth noting that you can always edit these files so you can desaturate the CCD file, you can increase the colors in the CMOS file. You're not necessarily stuck with what we saw, but it just goes to show how those images are coming out of the cameras themselves. One thing that was interesting to note is that oftentimes I'll hear people justify CMOS sensors being more muted in that the colors are more accurate. And people will say, oh, you know, if you're working for a brand or with a marketing department, you got to make sure the colors are accurate. You can always play with the colors, but you got to make sure in the file they're accurate. And that is usually a justification for CMOS sensors. But actually comparing the two in the actual computer and looking at the raw files, the Kodak sensor was producing images. They were obviously saturated, but they seemed to be much more accurate in terms of what I was physically holding, what I was seeing with my own eyes, than the CMOS sensor. And even beyond that, the CMOS sensor straight up got it wrong when we were looking at that uh, picture with the gummy bears on the blue paper, the CMOS sensor made that paper look purple. So it's like, not only is it desaturated, but it's straight up incorrect. It's not accurate. 
So that was actually opposite of what people will often say about CMOS sensors. So I don't know, maybe another test could be done there. But let me know what you thought of this video, what you thought of the different files that we looked at. Obviously, some people will prefer one file over the other, and you can always edit them to look different than what we saw, but just straight raw files out of the camera, that's what it looks like. And maybe there could be a part two where we go out and repeat this test outside and have some more variable lighting conditions and see how that might change or not change the end result. So if you have suggestions, put them in the comments below. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, and I will say this was the hardest video to put together that I've done thus far here on YouTube. So if you did enjoy it, I would really appreciate if you gave me a thumbs up um, because it was really challenging. <laughs> Still fun to do, but definitely the most time consuming thus far. And uh, also worth noting, I do put out videos every single week. So if you wanna stay in the loop on that, hit the subscribe button. That will also make me smile. And uh, otherwise, in the meantime, I'm Colton. I'll see you in the next one.